Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Who? And we're going to do a follow-up to a video we did yesterday about Rotten Tomatoes and how the media seems to be turning on it. Well, it was one site then. It was but now book. there's a pattern. Yeah, it was comicbook.com yesterday, and I've got the, that one pulled up too. And this was last night. Rotten Tomatoes movie scores don't matter, so quit whining. Now Forbes, uh, today, Star Wars movie scores reveal why you should ignore Rotten Tomatoes. Right, because it does, cause, because the scores aren't what they thought they should be. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. It's everybody's bashing Rotten Tomatoes now, which which YouTubers have been doing it for a while now, pointing out that it's a load of shit. And now everybody else and their brothers suddenly jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, so this is really interesting. This guy here on Forbes has all kinds of charts basically showing you why you shouldn't listen to Rotten Tomatoes and that- He that went and made charts. He made charts. Okay. He made charts. I am not kidding. Wow. Um, a long time ago in a galaxy that avoided cliches, film critics produced reviews that would help people predict whether or not they might enjoy a new movie like The Rise of Skywalker. But as science has since shown, he's going to science, critical reception is not as reliable a measure of entertainment value. And he goes into Well, no, this, it should be go, go by audience scores but they're gonna say no that's not true because they cheated for captain marvel even though they cheated both ways on captain marvel captain marvel is not mentioned in this article at all it's a very lengthy article and they go into some psychology study by dr pascal wallish of what? nyu uh they they had three thousand individuals rated over 200 movies with each person's ratings being compared against scores from other people or against professional critics and websites such as rotten tomatoes Besides showing that our taste in movies is highly idiosyncratic, oh God. our research showed that we only agree with film critics about 3%. You know what? This has been going on for years. Think about it. I remember I was a kid and I'm like, why are these movies up for Academy Awards? The ones that would get picked? Because I'm like, it's clearly not based on popular opinion. It's based on, you know, elitist opinion. And I've known that since I was little. So this is, you know, whoa, well, guess what? And water is wet. And the movie that, that prompted this study was The Last Jedi. Oh, of course it was. Of course it was. It was a divisive movie that was critically acclaimed, but generally disliked by the public. Oh, oh they're admitting this. Are they admitting it now? We're going to talk about this because it, it seems like everybody now is starting to backpedal on the Disney sequel trilogy. And The Last Jedi was basically the straw that broke Campbell's back or whatever the hell they were racing in the uh, which Canto Blight. We, which we have been saying over and over and over and over again. A lot of people have been saying this. And you know what? The media fiercely defended The Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi has been a point of contention for fans uh, for years. And these media outlets constantly use the movie to attack fans. Mm -hmm. uh, they propped up Rotten Tomatoes. They called for Rotten Tomatoes to redo the way that it grades movies to defend Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And they made such a big deal over Rotten Tomatoes. And now they're coming out and saying, hey, guess what? It's all a bunch of bullshit. Doesn't really matter. And we've got science to prove it. Well, maybe the checks from Rotten Tomatoes stopped coming. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? That sounds crazy, but that would not surprise me. No, um, no. It's, it is odd that now that there's no money, everybody's just suddenly doing a 180 for no reason. It was unusual to have this much of a divide between critics and audiences in regards to The Last Jedi. That statement isn't supported by the evidence and is further proven false by ratings for the final part of the main Star Wars story, The Rise of Skywalker, which confirms it's actually common for moviegoers and critics to disagree. We don't need to study your charts to know this. Everybody knows this. I, I mean, is this a surprise to anyone? Yes. Really? It's a surprise to, to the media, which spent uh, three years up its own ass, up the movie studio's asses, uh, defending these movies. Most of them, again, tinfoil mouse ears, Disney movies. That's a chart I want to see. How far up their own ass were they? There is a chart I'd like to see. How far did you get your did you get your nose in? Did you get your whole head <laughs> in? Could you imagine what the pic? It'd be a pictograph. Can you imagine how that would look? You know, you have your yourself bent over and it sees how far you know this this site has their head this far up their own ass. This site has their their head this far up their own rear end. This is just this is like common sense. Like, oh look, the final two films have a polarized opinion. The critics love the Last Jedi and hated the Rise of Skywalker, while the general public has a contrary view. But here's what's interesting too: the critics, quote unquote, were mostly the bloggers that were on these sites 
that we're talking about. Um, can I see this for one second? You, yeah. you skip past the actual chart. It's interesting here. Like, here's what the different ratings, and then you get to here, and then here's, this is the audience on The Last Jedi. Yeah. This is the critical score on The Last Jedi. Yeah. And then on, this is the uh, Rise of Skywalker, the audience score, the critical score. I don't know if I agree with the audience score. I think people were, I, I'll tell you the truth, because a lot of people said it was a shitty movie. Mm -hmm. They said it was, it, you know, admirable that they tried to walk back some of the stupid decisions with the the last jedi but it was still a shitty movie disclaimer we haven't even bothered watching it no. yet we didn't go to the theater we sat it out we didn't go to the dollar theater and we have not picked it up on digital. i'll tell you what i thought about it i thought about it just the other day and then i when i think about actually having to sit through it i just i just i just have a sinking feeling in my stomach like i don't want to sit through another one yeah. i know it's terrible but i just i just can't I, like, I'll, I'll be like okay maybe i'll watch it and then i'll think about having to sit through it for two hours two and a half hours and then i'm just like i really don't want to that sounds like getting your teeth pulled to me I, you know, th that's that's how far we've we've fallen out of love with Star Wars, where it used to be like, my God, we have to be there opening night. We have to wait for tickets. We got to get the tickets. As soon as they go on sale, we got to be there. If we got to call off work to be there, we'll be there to, if I get around to it someday, maybe I'll watch it. Now, in, in, con in, in contrast, if I see like The Empire Strikes Back or, or Return of the Jedi or, you know, Rogue One or that stuff on TV, I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is like the 10th time I watch it. I don't care. I'll watch it again. Well, old movies a lot more than that. I'll gladly watch it again. But when it comes to even trying to make myself watch the, the Rise of Skywalker once, I just can't make myself do it. Yeah. It's, and I think it's because, you know, we've talked about it so much. It was There's so much controversy around it. Uh, there's so much bullshit. You know, all the leaks that turned out to be true, that the studios and the directors kept de denying were true. And now we've got uh, a lot of other people falling out of love with the Disney sequel trilogy. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, later here, but these the, the fact that they had to make charts this is just, that can't. they had to make charts like this is ridiculous. Um, if you expect critics in the public to agree, it might be because you've misunderstood the roles of critics. According to the definition, a critic is one who engages often professionally in the analysis, evaluation, or appreciation of works of art. I actually have a second, like almost second degree in art history and art and, and a strong a, a degree in art and art appreciation. And I've trained in all those things. So when I'm making a, a statement, um, I am looking at things like, you know, appreciation, evaluation of art. Um, I'm not saying I'm a critic, but I'm trained to do so. And they're saying one who expresses a reasoned opinion or any uh, or on any matter involving a judgment of its value, truth, righteousness, beauty or technique. Um, they're talking about aesthetics. I always look at things from an aesthetic perspective. You know, a lot of uh, fan critics do too, but... But they're just, because it's not the right opinion. Right. So they're dismissed because they're not the professional critics. Right. Working for the New York Times. But here's the thing. A lot of the fan critics brought up valid points and criticisms. And they said, yeah, the cinematography was gorgeous, but that didn't over, that didn't, that didn't fix the plot problems. The plot, plot, plot problems, some of the issues are very bad and it undoes the whole first, first movie. And people, you know, oh, how dare you? How dare you? So you're not only allowed to be a critic if they say you're allowed to be a critic. Pretty much. And if you break rank, then golly. Basically, the whole point of this... I'm not reading this whole damn article. It's like 35 paragraphs of blah, which basically... You know, and charts. Everybody blah and charts. Everybody could have told you this. YouTube has been telling people this for years, and they've ignored it because it wasn't the story that they wanted to hear. Um, but now that The Rise of Skywalker has not set well with critics, now we can attack the sequel trilogy. Right. Now, now you're allowed to. Now you're allowed to. Well, that or the fact that, you know, uh, they aren't going to get a cookie from Disney anytime soon. Well, that could be too. That actually could be too, because, uh, you know, there was a lot of conspiracies about Disney paying off critics. But you know what? Having worked uh, in and around Disney PR, they do what they got to do to make sure their stuff well, is successful. You, oh, you want that, you know, oh, you know, maybe if it's favorable, you will get you some uh, passes to be media for uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge or whatever. And here's the thing. We know this happens because they blocked. What was it? Uh, the L.A. Times? They blocked the LA Times because they gave a bad review of a movie. So Disney actually blocked the LA yes. Times from having access because they gave a bad review for one of the films. That actually happened. You can look it up. And then they backpedaled after uh, popular opinion came back out and people were like, wait, what? Because they gave you negative opinion. You're, you're blocking them. How's that giving us fair, unbiased journalism? Because there's no such thing as fair and unbiased journalism when it comes to Disney. Unless you're an outlier like Pirates and Princesses.net. 
Yeah, <laughs> get that plug in there. I did. Yeah, but they, they've done that before. They've actually blacklisted media outlets. They will blacklist uh, Disney fan sites that don't play ball. Mm -hmm. um, they will actually go on the offensive. They actually, Disney, their uh, PR guy, the, Thomas Smith, over at the Disney Parks blog, took to attacking Disney fan sites that did not tow the line. Well, even that, when you get there, you get, okay, so you get media access and you get there and you get to do the interviews, right? The real journal, what journalists want to do, interviews. You're given a list of questions you're allowed to ask. You're not allowed to yeah. just ask questions like for real answers that are, you know, hey, what the public wants to know. No, no, you're given a list of questions that they have been programmed to answer. So that it's like animatronics. So that they are, they are ensured the correct responses are given uh, and the correct quotes are posted in your articles. This is how much they control how, what, is, what is put out there. So do you think for one minute they wouldn't do what they had to do to control Rotten Tomatoes? Which they, 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 the guy who runs it worked for Disney for years? Yeah, it's, it's not that much of a reach. I mean, you want to talk conspiracy. When there are billions of dollars on the line, it is not that much of a reach to to make a very logical conclusion that Disney will do what they have to do, mm -hmm. especially when Rotten Tomatoes is basically viewed as a marketing tool now and not a legit. It's not legit. It's not a legit. So they'll do what review. they have to do to control the narrative. We've seen it firsthand. And one of the biggest controversies were over Captain Marvel and The Last Jedi. Right. You know, so things all changed to, 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 you know, make it easier for those two films. You know, it didn't really work for The Last Jedi. No, it didn't. But I'm just saying it, they were Disney owned movies. That's what all the controversy was about, uh, was uh, Disney owned movies. And that just kind of spilled into a bigger conversation. But, uh, you know, talking about backpedaling, I want to bring this up. A couple things here before we sign off. One. Ghostbusters 2016, people are falling out of love with it. Yeah, it's interesting. Everybody has been going back to this well over and over again. Why toxic uh, toxic man baby trolls exist? It all started because of Ghostbusters 2016. The misogyny, the man baby tears, the incels, wah, 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 you know, phobia-isms, whatever. And they always, always, always go back to Ghostbusters 2016. And now... Now they're like, well, maybe 20, Ghostbusters 2016 wasn't as good as we thought it was. Yeah. I'm uh, like, are you effing kidding me? Yeah, I know, right? It's like they spent all this time attacking fans. Like even last year, this article from Vox talking about Ghostbusters 2016 being the harbinger of things to come. Uh, it was a window into the ways of the internet that fanned the flames and provide a platform for the toxic corners of pop culture fandom. And now here we are with Screen Rant today. Yeah, maybe Ghostbusters 2016 wasn't so great. What was the minor change you thought that could improve it? What we said. Make Are it, you serious? Make it a direct sequel to the originals. Yes. That that was their that was that, that wasn't just us. There were so many fans who said that. They said a couple things. One, it should be a direct sequel to the originals. And two, why don't we why don't you just do a mixed cast? Yeah. And they said, even if you do all female, just make it a direct sequel and it makes sense. Um, they didn't do either one of those. And instead, they actually, all the men in the movie, if you don't believe me, go watch the film. Every male in that movie is either stupid or an asshat. Every, yep. every dude. My, my son was like, why is every guy in this movie an idiot or a jerk? And we went back and like, yeah, you're right. Every dude is either stupid or an asshat. Because that was the point. I mean, that that was the point. That, that This is going to bite Hollywood in the ass really hard. We've been the asshat. The asshat. Uh, we've been talking about this with the, the pop culture apocalypse, the Hollywood apocalypse that is happening now because of the shutdowns, that Hollywood is really going to have to kiss some serious fan ass after this if they want people to come back and spend money. Which is what's going on with the blogs, guys. Yeah. The blogs, you know, before they had Hollywood backing them up, they could say whatever toxic media shit they wanted to say about fans and they can spin whatever narrative they wanted to spin that would get them the best media access, the best um, placements for this or that. But now that there's no money in Hollywood and Hollywood's all shut down, they actually have to depend on fans to read the articles. Yeah, and this is important because a lot of, uh, a lot of these digital media outlets are cutting staff. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, you know, the advertisers can't pay their bills. So well, advertising rates are down. The advertising rates are down for blogs for. Yeah, it, it is. In fact, we got a notification. We, we run a couple of blogs and our uh, advertising network sent out a notification that said you can expect a 70 up to a 70 percent decrease in revenue for the next couple of months because of the uh, coronavirus shutdown. So you have to imagine it's affecting um, you know, all these outlets, BuzzFeed and uh, Geo Media cut staff, Bustle cut staff, 
Um, journalists are being laid off. One of the first round of layoffs was actually at, uh, Orlando Weekly because where are yep. they going to cover? They, they cut like 13 people, boom. Mm -hmm. And so all these journos are looking at potential unemployment. Right, right. And the bloggers that are, that are you know, kowtowing to Hollywood, they're going to feel it eventually because, you know, fans don't trust them anymore. And now they're trying to, to backpedal to be like, oh, look, look, we're one of you again. Yeah. We're one of you again, I swear. But now the damage has already been done. It's like, you just called me a troll because I didn't agree with your opinion like three months ago. I, I didn't like she was outfit so you said i was uh, i was a misogynist even though i'm a woman and now you want me to follow your blogs because you need you need the hits to stay in business yeah so that's what's going on here um i don't think these opinions are, are genuine when these when the the money was flowing like water vox could have all the hot takes they wanted to mm -hmm. gawker you know we know what happened with them but geo media io9 they could say whatever the hell they wanted it benefited to. them because it was clickbait and it yeah. would like get people to click on it and make people mad and then they talk about it and then like you know like we did with videos and it gets them you know interested in these articles that they normally would not probably look twice at yep. and that's why they did it and now the money's not there to clickbait. So the only way you're gonna get people to come to your articles is to be like, oh, we're sorry, fans. We're one of you kids. Hey, fellow kids. We agree with you now all of a sudden for no reason whatsoever, flipping ever. Click on our, our, our blog. Yeah, I mean, we're doing literally a 180 now, and it's just been within the last month or two that we've seen it. You know, Comic Book Resources is doing this too. I've been pointing out some of their articles. I'm like, God, this sounds a lot like what YouTubers have been saying for years. Right, and say what you will about us. You know, we might not always have the right opinion or whatever, but we stick to what we're saying. We haven't been flip-flopping on our opinions. Even if we, we didn't demonetize videos we knew was we're gonna make, you know, we, were, we couldn't make money on just to get the truth out there, and we didn't even make money on it, but we stuck to our guns we stayed with our opinions. These people are just flip flopping right and left. Yeah, because they're trying to keep their jobs. Um, you know, the digital, another, I mean, last year was catastrophic for digital journalism. Mm -hmm. This year is going to be worse because, again, we know the advertising revenue is drying up for banner ads, especially which, which bankroll most of. Uh, most of these websites and you know it's getting really annoying every damn website you go to they're like disable your ad blocker and it looks like a virus popping up on your screen like ad blocker detected mm -hmm. if you want journalism yeah. or journalism you'll disable the ad you blocker you can even pay to subscribe to, to newspapers and you still have to dis and, you, and they still want you to disable your ad blocker even after you've already paid for a subscription yeah uh, yeah. that, what was that? Orlando uh, Sentinel, I think. Yeah, was it was it? one of yeah. those Orlando Business Journal or Sentinel, one of them. We used to pay the subscription because it's for our business, for the uh, Disney stuff we cover. And then they still said, we have an ad blocker on, you have to disable it to read content after we had to pay for the subscription. It's like, are you serious? It's like, what? It was an either or thing, people. But yeah, we're starting to see a lot of backpedaling now. Look, uh, you know, The Last Jedi was a, was a shit show, according to the editors, female mm -hmm. editors. Where, where were these stories when the fans were being castigated? by Lucasfilm and castigated on Twitter and uh, by the media. Where where, where were these stories? I'm sure these ladies were speaking up back then too. Oh, but they weren't, you know, they weren't listening to them because they didn't have the right opinion. As I have run into numerous cases as a woman, most times as a woman, if your opinion, your your, your opinion matters if you're a woman and has a, a stronger opinion than everybody else's, unless it's different than what they're, the narrative they're spinning, then they step over you and you get marginalized twice. And that's probably what happened to those ladies. Ahmed Best, remember how they used poor Ahmed Best to attack the fans? Yep. Remember, they were like, oh, uh, Ahmed Best wanted to kill himself just like Kelly Marie Tran, you horrible, horrible people. We're going to use his tragedy to make you feel bad about not liking The Last Jedi. Well, now that, you know, things are changing, now Ahmed Best is like, yeah, the, the sequel trilogy was pretty bad and George Lucas wouldn't have made that sequel right. trilogy. He's come out and said it wasn't because of what the reasons they said it was for what happened. Yeah. He's come out and said this. And he's like, you know, no, I'm not going to sit by and watch this anymore. And now he's come out and said, you know, he didn't he didn't think that, that George would have liked the sequel trilogy. Well, we know he didn't. He called, I know. He called them he, white But he slavers, also said, you know? he said it was because he thought that the reason that Fan and Menace and that, you know, he was important because a lot of kids yeah. really liked it. And even back when we were kids, the Star Wars movies were popular because it was it was for everyone but it really they really had a, a kid element to it because that's why they had the toys and all right. the cool stuff and you were waiting to see what, what's new what's they're gonna have something new what's a new movie george lucas always makes new vehicles or new characters there's gonna be something exciting and new nope. and we're never gonna get really awesome toys and um even, even if, whether you like the prequels or not you could always take from it that there was there was it was for kids too yeah. and there was always gonna be something awesome for toys and for new ships and for new things and then you get to the sequel trilogy and then it's like how can we you know take everything that already existed and because it's for nostalgia instead of making something new you just bank on it for nostalgia and make it clearly for adults 
Yeah, and that was it. There was like nothing new in the city. It was Except just a broom kid. Broom kid, yeah. I don't, he didn't even get an action figure. No, there you go. I Maybe mean, he did. Did he ever get an action figure? I don't think he did. Well, yo, if Kenner had been making figures, they actually would have called him Broom Kid. Probably would have. Because they didn't actually have a name for him. So I love how they just kind of like, they're really on the nose with their names. They were. They really uh, were. You know. We used to call, uh, was it Ponda Baba? We used to call him Buttface. Buttface. Yeah. Well, now he has a name. He used to be Walrus Man. And yeah, they, and I never understood why they called him Walrus Man. I guess he kind of looks like a walrus, I guess. I, I, I kind of. I think of, Buttface would have been a much better name. Buttface. That's what we called him. Uh, you know, Jar Jar, if Jar Jar hadn't been the main character, he probably would have been, you know, Duckhead or something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, stupid like that. But um, yeah, now, now it's trendy. Now, when your sites are dying because you're being starved of advertising revenue, now you're going to come back and flip-flop your opinions, and now you're going to try to, to kiss the fans' butts. Mm -hmm. So my question is, will the fans remember how horribly they were treated for three or five years? It's like comics. It's exactly yeah. like comics all over exactly again. Exactly like comics. The same thing is happening in comics right now, where people who demonized uh, demonized anyone who called out that the comic book industry was failing, that it was hanging by a thread, that things in comics were bad, that the new comics weren't selling. Uh, anybody who who said that the Emperor wasn't wearing any new, new clothes, they were demonized by the mainstream comic book industry that now sees the writing on the wall. Right. And it's like people who spoke out, they took a personal, uh, we were one of them. It was, it was a great personal loss to do so. Oh yeah, we got blacklisted. But we still did yeah. it because it's like, I, because one thing you'll find about us is, you know, the truth is the truth. And even if we don't make money on it, we're going to tell the truth. And you know, that's what we did. And we took, we took so much crap for speaking out and on all of this. And now when they're trying to turn around and be like, well, you know what? Hey, fellow kids, we're agreeing with you now. I'm just like, kiss my rear. I got something called, I got told by dudes I was a misogynist. The one guy swore at me and treated and, and, and called me uh, bad words in, in Spanish. I'm like, because I didn't have the right opinion, I automatically was a, a misogynist, even though I was a woman. I've taken so much, I got told I wasn't feminist enough because I had kids. By a male literary agent. Oh no, that was agent. a different. That was a different time. I was oh, told it was it wasn't okay. I wasn't told it was feminist enough. By the male literary agent, because I had a female character smile because the, the crush she had, which was a boy, had me a boy, could have been a girl, wouldn't have mattered. Um, liked her and smiled at her. Of course, she's going to effing smile. You know, kiss my butt. I was a teenage girl. You weren't. So what's going to happen is this whole this whole situation is going to be retconned. Uh, by the media once mm -hmm. we get on the other side of it to be like we were always on the side of the fans mm -hmm. Golly and what's gonna happen with comics in particular and that's a whole nother video is these people that demonize fans and demonize creators who had wrong think are going to come in and they're going to take over and they're going to kick out the people That's exactly what who happens. started the movement. Everybody who got kicked out before had their own life rafts because they got kicked out and they've had like several years to build it. Now, just like you said with comics, they're going to try to, 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 to be like, give us a hand, pull us out of the water so that you can get on your life raft and then people help them because they feel bad and they're going to shove you into the water and take your life raft. That's exactly what they're going to do. Only so many people can fit on the door. That's right. Uh, and be like Rose. <laughs> be like Rose and kick <laughs> kick his ass off. Um, even though they've shown that they actually both could. I know fit when under. I watched that movie, I was like, "What the? I would have taken turns. Well, wouldn't have been... I would have moved over. I would have done whatever I had to do to make sure you would have been not in the water. I, I would have. I would have gone in the water. I don't care. I would have made you. I would have made you take turns. And you know what he would have done? He would have fought me because that's what he does every turn. And you know who always wins? I do. So I would have won in the end anyway. It's like Neon's got to drown so Geeky can can move on with Clownfish TV. Get no, that, get that next. That wouldn't button. work. We wouldn't work. It wouldn't work without both of us. Uh, now you don't know where to go with this. I don't know where to go. Now I'm all sad. I'm all sad because I'm thinking about drowning in icy cold water and you get remarried. Every night in my dreams. You should just hook up with Henry Cavill. It should be okay. You. I feel you. <laughs> that is how I know you. Go on. Yeah, Henry Cavill is nice, but. But yours is, I like yours better. He does. See, she would just, she'd be fine. She'd get over it. She'd get over it. I wouldn't it. get over it. She'd get over it. And I she'd, wouldn't. Would she'd, you, okay, now everybody's like, would you shut up and wrap this up now? Yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Anyway, guys, you're going to see a lot of this and a lot of these news outlets, they're going to start pushing, and they're already starting to, they're going to start pushing into YouTube and they're going to bring their uh, their revised, retconned opinions with them. They're going to try to fool everybody into thinking that this is the way they always thought. Right. But uh, don't forget, these are the same people that attacked fans for years. Right. For years. I mean, if they would 
wouldn't say, hey, look, we were wrong. And we're admitting we're wrong. They won't say that. And we're sorry. And, you know, we're seeing it now that we shouldn't have done this. People might give them a pass. Um, but I mean, people on this side probably would more so than the other way around. Like they never give you a pass, but no. they'll expect you to give them a pass. But I think people would be more understanding, but they're not. They're just up and changing their opinion willy nilly and being like, look, look, you know, we're one of you. Please give us money. Yeah, give us money. Cause now they know they're gonna have to be, they're gonna have to be uh, fed directly by the fans now because those ad rates are gonna drop. And as soon as it blows over and in 10 years when Hollywood's back to normal, yeah, in 10 however years. long it takes, they're gonna go right back to this again. Yep. So. Yep. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.